Hey guys, this is Sam Weiss with Bluecraft. Today I'm going to start the first video of a three part series that will help you understand how to design a mission specific aircraft. Now, many of you have already built airplanes in the past, RC aircraft, maybe you even put some autopilots in them. And hopefully, with this three part series, we will build upon your experience in aircraft uh, design and, and building of aircraft and expand it to design an aircraft that's specific to a mission. Now we will be using rules of thumb to um, simplify the, the aircraft design and in future videos we'll explain those rules of thumb and explain how to get more detailed into those areas. So the three part series will go as follows. We'll have this first video which is just going to be an overview of the mission requirements and the general sizing spreadsheet. The second video will do the initial aircraft design defining the main wing, the stabilizing surfaces and the battery selection making sure that we're meeting our aircraft requirements. And then in the third video, we're going to refine the aircraft design using mock-up. We're going to model it in mock-up, make sure the volume of the payload and the volume of the battery fit together inside the fuselage. We're going to refine the design of the main wing and adjust the mounting angles. And then take the information from mock-up, go back to our spreadsheet, and get a better estimate of our flight times and our ranges. So, that's the uh, overview of this short course. Let's go ahead and jump in. The mission that we're going to design for this time is for search and rescue. The goal is to build a UAV that a uh, search and rescue team can carry in on their back, that they can quickly assemble, toss up into the air to help them get some reconnaissance and see where maybe the lost hikers are. The requirements are listed below, and we'll be using those in the aircraft design. Some of the important ones that will really be be working to meet is obviously we need to reach our range goal here, but also the the stall speed is what we're going to be looking at to make sure that we can be hand launched as well as land in the in the brush and not um, get damaged. And then the the packaging size is going to be important when we look at our wingspan and the fuselage length. So. When we actually come back to design the aircraft, we'll review these again. We're going to skip over here to this spreadsheet. This is the tool we're going to use to design or do the initial design of the aircraft. Now, it looks overwhelming at first, but I'm going to step you through all the different tables here. And my hope is that by the end of this video, you'll feel um, a little bit more comfortable with this table and not be so intimidated. And then as you start to use it, I'm sure you'll you'll settle right in. So. I'm going to start up here in the upper left corner. Everything that's green are the cells that you can edit. Anything that has blue text, you will put into mock-up later. And everything that's just blank and normal um, is a calculation or just text. So the aircraft design starts with the payload requirements. This is important because every aircraft for a mission-specific aircraft has a specific payload that has a weight, a volume, and a power requirement. So you'll put in your payload requirements. After that, as you come down the side here, we'll just go straight down here. We have the aircraft weight, the zero alpha drag coefficient, and the Allsworth efficiency. Now, these two are just guesses for now. We can come back and refine them later. We're probably just gonna leave the Allsworth efficiency for this short course, but we'll make a better estimate of this value once we have the design in mock-up. As we come down we have the current aircraft conditions so the air speed and then the air density this is currently set at sea level. We have the weight summary, the aircraft or airframe weight which is the weight that we put up here, the payload weight which is the weight that we put up here, and then the battery weight which is being estimated by an energy density in the uh, propulsion table, and we'll get into more detail on that as we go through our design. We then sum our weights and get a total aircraft weight. The propulsion table is pretty simple. You have your battery capacity, then your energy density. Now this is a pretty good energy density for a low-end lithium polymer battery, uh, battery. And we'll adjust that later for the specific battery that we choose. We have the cell voltage. If you look down here on the right, you'll see that for lithium polymer, 3.7 is the cell voltage, and for lithium ion, it's 3.6. There are other battery technologies out there. If you plan to use other battery technologies, 
you can uh, look up those values, the cell voltage. We have the arrangement of our battery pack. So whether it's three batteries in series or four or five, on the packs, when we actually look them up online, it'll have a classification for 3S or 6S or 5S. And that's the value we'll put there. The number of batteries. And then we calculate the total voltage of the, uh, the battery and the capacity of the battery. Here's the value you input for the capacity used. If you go much above 90%, you definitely risk damaging batteries. But uh, we'll, we'll design with the idea of uh, consuming almost the entire battery pack. The overall efficiency, there's a lot wrapped up into this efficiency number. The, the combination of the propeller, motor, ESC, and battery, all of those combined are wrapped up into this 40% efficiency value. Now, we're going to start with our design at 40%. If you really work hard, you can get that value all the way up into the 60s and low 70s, but a 40% efficiency is a good place to start if you're just taking components that are compatible and putting together based on um, maybe something you read online about what propeller should go with which motor and such. So below that we have the current draw. This is helpful for us to know what the, the current draw of the propulsion system is to make sure we don't overamp our ESC. All right, so that's this first set of uh, tables here on the left. The center tables are the definitions of our lifting surfaces. So first we have the main wing. We will define the main wing by a wing loading and suggestions for those wing loadings will be down here in the bottom right. We will then give it an aspect ratio and a taper ratio for a simple tapered wing. And um, it will calculate the wing area, the semi-span, root cord, tip cord, the average cord. All these values will be useful in mock-up. And then we'll have, based on the airfoil we choose for the, the main wing, we'll have a value here of the max lift, lift coefficient. And from this value, we will do some calculations such as the stall speed or the stall onset speed. Below that, we have the horizontal and the vertical stabilizing um, stabilizer tables. These values in these tables do not affect the calculations of, of range or flight time. However, they are useful tables when we actually go to mock up and design the aircraft. You put in a tail volume based on the suggestion here, and lever arm, aspect ratio, taper ratio, and it will give you the values to put into mock up. And the same thing with the vertical. You put in a tail volume, and then the lever arm span taper ratio, and it will give you the values to put into mock up. So as we scroll to the right, here's where the money's made. We have all our results right here in this table. Top to bottom, we start with our lift and our drag coefficients. And then to the right, we have the dimensionalized lift and drag. Ignore the values that are here now. The, the, the spreadsheet is blank, so these values are, are meaningless. We have the lift to drag ratio, our mass fraction, which is the empty weight, meaning the aircraft weight with no batteries and no payload divided by the total weight, which is the aircraft with the battery and payloads, and then we have our payload fraction. And the payload fraction is a value that's just going to help us get started with the design, but is not necessarily critical in our, in our design. And it's the payload weight over the total weight. Now we have our cruise airspeed. These actually, these, these four airspeeds here, they're all bunched to here for convenience. When you input the airspeed, it's actually over here in the green cell. But they're all bunched to here for convenience so that we can see how they compare to one another and so that we can see them in various units based on what you're used to measuring uh, your airspeed in. So we have the cruise airspeed, which is the value over here, the max range airspeed, which is also the minimum, minimum drag airspeed, the max endurance airspeed, which is also the minimum power airspeed, and then our minimum airspeed, which is our stall onset airspeed. Um, which is calculated based on the max lift coefficient. So that's why this value is important. It will help us know about where, this is a very first order guess of where the aircraft will stall. Under that, we estimate our flight time, our range in kilometers and miles, and um, from this we'll be able to see if we're gonna meet our mission requirements. So there's the overview of the general sizing spreadsheet. Hopefully that will be enough for you not to be too intimidated in our next video when we actually go through and design the aircraft. Thanks for watching.